What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Island Hopper TV and today we're going to talk about is Brazil safe? Is Rio de Janeiro safe? This is Coca Cabana Beach. Uh, for those of you who don't know about uh, Rio, Coca Cabana, you got Ipanema, you got Ucra, um, Leblanc, many beaches around here and people want to know are they safe? So that's what this video is going to be all about. So let's go ahead and get this started. So as we continue to talk about Israel safe, here I am having a beer in Coco Cabana Beach. It's about uh, 10 o'clock at night. Um, I'm all by myself, obviously. Uh, you can see there's Coco Cabana right here, and right? You know, this whole big beach. And uh, there's the walking environment, the, the boardwalk area. I'm not too far away from my hotel. I'm not pushing my luck, but I've had three beers. Uh, I've had a guy try to sell me uh, some drugs, and I've had a guy try to sell me some peanuts. And I'm, I love communicating with the locals. I'm totally open to that. It's just no one in my shoes wants to have any bad interaction. So I want everything to be not sour, right? I don't want any sour taste in my mouth. And try to keep things cool. You know, don't want to make any enemies, obviously. So uh, that's just basically been my approach to hanging out in Coca Cabana here at night. Special, obviously. This is different bag. What they did in my mouth. At shoe shine sneakers, Rio de Janeiro, Copacabana Beach. You understand? Very, very, very good shoes now. Look, black, original color. All right, that's new shoes now. Before it's dirty. Yeah, look at the shoes. Same, same. Look at black. That's finished, sir. Thank you. So here's a real tip. Uh, before you do anything or agree to anything, always agree to a price before you do it. Sometimes you can move really quickly and forget to ask a price, but uh, always try to ask a price first because if you don't, you end up paying a lot more than uh, what you anticipated and you might not have agreed to it. And then, you know, you get locked into something then you have to pay it. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, that's the rate, that's what I charge. And you're like, what? I didn't know you charged that. So I just wanted to put that out there. let's keep this little mini series about safety in Brazil going or in Rio so as you can see and here I'm down here on Coco Cabana Beach it is overcast which is unfortunate because I checked the weather report it said we were gonna get sunshine yesterday which we definitely got and sunshine today which we did not get uh, so that's a little bit frustrating and uh, I think I was just trying to sell me something but uh, as far as coming down here, I mean, I was down here at night, last night, Coco Cabana, and today I come down here, I want to see what it feels like to be here, watch the people around me, and uh, see how everyone enjoys themselves, and fully understand just the, the safety concerns and safety risks of being in Rio, and that comes about because even my taxi cab driver yesterday, he told me very specifically, he said, be on guard which is kind of why I keep on walking around because I'm sitting here with my cell phone out. But he, you know, he said, you know, be on guard. And I've actually left my uh, backpack at home or at my room with my uh, drone and GoPro in it as I come down here because, you know, I don't want to have any, make a target of myself. And I've noticed that a lot of people down here also don't have their bags out. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, let me turn their camera around here. I want to turn the camera around. Um, you know, I went to the favela yesterday. We drove through it. The taxi driver or the private driver, if you want to call him that, he seemed very confident to go through there. He said it would be no problem. And it wasn't any problem. I mean, not at any time do we feel threatened. Although people say it's crazy to go down through favelas. And uh, I did talk to a couple that was from England. They said that they actually would not, or that they tried to go into a favela yesterday. And they started walking into it and then they felt like it was, uh, pretty much not a good idea so they turned around so if you do decide to check out one of the favelas although people have said they're pretty safe and there's no real concern um, you should 
probably go on a tour or with someone who's a experienced local that you know you can trust going through there. Uh, that would be my advice if you choose to go to a favela, um, based on what I've heard and based on what I've read and experienced personally. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, just sitting down here at Coco Cabana, I mean, I, you, you can see it's just a average day on the beach. Nothing too uh, crazy to uh, state. I got this for seven real, this umbrella, and then another seven real for the chair, and then the coconut uh, right here. This right here, coconut drink was another seven uh, Brazilian real. Going through with Lapa yesterday, I had my backpack on, um, my camera out, and that was kind of an area that I personally wouldn't have gone alone. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have gone down there alone. I wouldn't have had the confidence to do it. But because I was with the private driver, well, I call him a private driver. I mean, he has his own car. He's not an Uber guy, but I met him at the hotel. So he was rec recommended by Hilton Hotel. Um, which leads me to my other point. I, I found it to be a good idea to stay in some of these um, well-known hotel brands that you know you can trust instead of trying to stay in a, you know, off-brand, off-the-beaten-path kind of hotel. I think it's just safer to be at brand-name hotels. I mean, this, this hotel I'm staying at right now is called Windsor. It's right next to the Marriott down on Coca-Cola. And it's uh, $95 a night, which isn't too expensive. I mean, I paid $95 a night for a hostel before. So, that's pretty good. Um, What's this, this, yeah? One of the things that's kind of annoying is the uh, street vendors that always walk by, try to sell you stuff, to find them to be very difficult to say no to. Um, yeah. Very difficult to say no to because... So, <laughs> it was pitching. Thing that I, I, I buy from some of them you know I don't want to say no to all of them so I buy from the first couple that approach me you know five here ten here twenty here um, but definitely if you got it in you to not make eye contact with people that's that's the best bet don't make eye contact with them when you're telling them no just look look down in a, in a nice way don't be a jerk you know don't, don't be rude but just say no no and don't look at them the second you make eye contact and engage with them they're thinking that you're ready to uh, buy, so that's been my experience um, so far. Well, let's keep this going. All right, so in conclusion, coming to Rio and being safe, the important things to do, you know, at night, when you need to take a taxi, take public transportation, preferably the black taxis, uh, the black car taxis, the higher end taxis, they're gonna cost you a little bit more than the yellow ones, but you know, that's a safer option. Obviously there's Uber. And then <clears throat> when you go out, try to pay with credit card. Don't have a lot of cash on you. And if you do have a, a significant amount of cash, let's just say, uh, I don't know, a thousand real or one, 2000 real, don't hold it all in the same pocket or the same wallet. Um, so it's something to uh, do to, in the event something like that were to happen where you were to get, uh, forced into a situation where you had to pay more. But also don't carry too big of bills, having small bills on you because when you pay, you can get suckered into um, paying more for things because they'll say, oh, well, we don't have change or you didn't pay enough. Once they see that you've got too much money, like say you say something costs uh, 20 real and you, have, you wanna pay with 100 real, They'll try to tell you, oh, we don't have change, but, uh, you know, they'll try to get the whole hundred off you, even though that's not justified, but that's what they do. <laughs> so I'm just telling you to be also conscious of that. Um, let's see, keep this thing going here. And so, obviously, this is a Sunday night here in uh, the beach. It's been raining all day, or, yeah, it's been overcast all day, but it's now raining. Um, you know, if you, if you got to go out with big bags, uh, try to avoid doing that. They say uh, dress down here, you know, so wear your not so great beach clothing. Uh, not your name brand jewelry or your name brand shirts with jewelry and collared shirts. You know, try not to look like a tourist. That's the big play here. And uh, as far as the cops go, I really don't see too much police around here. 
And so, I don't know how they would stop someone. You know, they probably wouldn't be able to catch anyone if they were to try anything because uh, there's just not enough people around, there's not enough police around to stop that. But anyways, guys, I just want to make this video uh, before the storm comes in. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.